Hi everyone, this is Alp Actinus here with the Actiris team. Today we are excited to present a demo report that we have put together based on our feedback from last week with you and the team. In this demo, what we will be doing is covering the flexibility of what Power BI and Actiris can offer to you uh, for the required reporting as well as drag and drop capability and ability to be able to create a tabular report in the way you need to be able to look at your data. So what we have right here is a report set up to show you the profitability of your various different businesses, in this case funds, over the course of 2024 by month. Now right now at the moment what you can see here is that we're showing actuals, so, so we're showing the actual performance and then we're showing how that's comparing to last year. With Power BI we have the ability to add conditional formatting where you can highlight any sort of value with a certain condition in place to be highlighted a certain color. So in this case, we're saying that anything below a negative $10,000 variance is something that is highlighted that we would like to look into. And the great thing about this is we do have the ability to quickly hover over and then see a quick tooltip showing us a breakdown of cost centers in this case. We can also see a breakdown as well if we hover over the subtotals to see the entire breakdown of where exactly the largest variances are coming from, in this case the accounting cost center. In addition to this, we also have the ability to be able to drill up and drill down. So if we want to just look at total expenses overall, and then of course see the trend of that over time, we have the ability to do so, as you can see. In addition, we can also play around with filters. So if we click on our filters here, this will bring up all of our various different parameters for us to pick and choose. So if we wanted to, for example, look at one individual fund, uh, which is made up of multiple different entities, we can click on, for example, Fund A. And by clicking on Fund A, our data now gets filtered down to show us all the various different data points. We can also switch to a certain asset class within Fund A, such as, for example, residential. And now we're looking at just the residential related assets for that particular fund. In addition, if you wanted to focus just on your revenue related accounts, you can go ahead and click on those. Or, of course, drill down to choose a particular revenue account you are interested in based on your GL account hierarchy format. Hitting the X button right here allows you to close this view and now you can see a quick view of your revenue for each of the various different funds that we have just selected. If we want to go back to check out our filters to see what we're selected on, we can simply go back here and then of course deselect all of our values in case we want to see a holistic view of what is going on throughout the entirety of the business for all funds. Clicking back on the close button, what I can go ahead and do here is I can go ahead now and go to our second piece, which is actually editing the report to how we need to be able to look at it. So at the moment, we right now are looking at actuals and actuals versus last year, and we're looking at a breakdown by all of our various different accounts. What we have the ability to do with Power BI and Actaris is we have the ability to be able to use the personalize this visual option. With this option, we have the ability to click here, and what this will do is allow us to personalize this view right here. So if we wanted to, in this case, for example, instead of looking at this from a month-year standpoint, we instead wanted to look at this from a quarter-year standpoint, we can go ahead and find our quarter-year field within our data set right here, within our hierarchies. And clicking here, I can go ahead and add in the quarter-year. I can also click back here and I can remove various different fields like the month year. And now when I remove this, we're looking at a quarter year view instead. If I click back on my filter, I can also now bring in multiple years by holding the control key on my Windows keyboard and then allowing me to bring in the quarter data for 2023 as well to be side by side with 2024. I'll click back here and I'll go back to 2024, so we're focusing on that, and then I'll go ahead and close this out. Now, in addition to this, what I also have the ability to do is add in additional metrics. So if we wanted to, for example, in the Personalize this Visual option, click on our plus button here, we can navigate to our calculation. We can see here that we have many different pre-built calculations, anywhere from actuals, actuals two years ago, three years ago, to quarter-to-date calculations, trailing 12-month calculations, 
as well as actuals versus last year, budget, and forecast. And we can also see this from a year-to-date standpoint as well. So if I wanted to, I can go ahead and I can bring in my actuals trailing 12 months. And now that will be added into the data set right here. So you have the ability to be able to bring in many different calculations to your wishes in terms of what you need to be able to look at and the way you need to be able to look at the data. In addition to this, what I can also do is I can also click off of this. And instead of looking at this from a row standpoint, maybe I want to look at the profitability from a fund standpoint. So instead, I can go to my entity table, grab my fund groups, remove my accounts. And now what's going to happen is we're going to have the ability to be able to look at this data from a fund view. I can also have the ability to be able to bring in my asset classes to sit beneath the fund group itself. So if I go back to the entity, add in my asset class, close this, now I can see a breakdown of my funds and I can drill in to be able to see the breakdown of each of the various different asset classes that are within these funds and what the profitability looks like overall, as well as the trailing 12 months. Clicking off of here, I can also go ahead and filter to just revenue to see what my revenue breakdowns look like for each of my various different asset classes in those particular funds. So I can see what that looks like over time by quarter for each of these various different funds and also focus on which ones are not performing versus which ones are performing. Now, in case this is a new user coming into this specific report, what we also have the ability to do is embed URL links where users can watch videos to get tutorials on exactly how to utilize this report. So in case this is a user's first time, what they can do is click on this link right here. And what this will go ahead and do is this will open up a SharePoint site in this case that allows us to click on a video that will showcase how to navigate the Revantage Power BI report. Heading back to the Power BI report, we also have the ability to export this data. So if we wanted to, for example, export this data, we can hit the three dots here, export the data, and then we can export in a current layout format, which is exactly what you're seeing right here. Or we can use a summarized data format and then export into CSV or Excel. In the export button, this will kick off the process. And there you will see that there is a file for you to go and click on to be able to look at the data from an Excel standpoint. In addition to this, you also have the ability to be able to export this data to PowerPoint and PDF. And then you also have the ability to create a live PowerPoint document as well, or a live Excel document. So if I clicked on the Analyze in Excel feature, this will also open up a Excel file, but this Excel file will have a pivot table connected to it that is going to be linked to your Power BI slash Actiris data model and allow you to slice and dice your data from there. So whether you're a user coming into Power BI and looking at the data in real time within Power BI, you also have the option to look within Excel and then have the ability to be able to pivot the data uh, within the report by all your various different metrics. So if I wanted to, I can go ahead and I can pivot this data utilizing the model itself uh, to be able to look at the data. So once the data is in and refreshed, uh, you can go ahead and use your data on here, such as dragging your actuals um, and then showing it by, for example, um, month and year on here. So if I want to drag in, now I have a month and year breakdown of my actuals uh, for 2020 through 2024. Now, one caveat here is the data is needing to be refreshed, which I know is, is something within your outline that you're looking to avoid. But this does give you the advantage to have data linked within here, this Excel file, to the main Power BI data model, meaning that everybody's operating off the single source of truth data, so everybody's using the same exact data points. So that's a nice utility to have in case you want to have users utilizing Excel. But the real benefit here is Power BI in real time, the ability to watch tutorials, and then, of course, be able to personalize your reports in the way that you would like to see them. Now, if a user has the build data set role privilege within Power BI, what they have the ability to do is edit the report. Now, what a user can do is they can save the report, for example, first as a copy. And now by saving this as a copy right here, they can create a copy that is within their environment. So if I wanted to, I can create one in the same environment here. Let's call this the custom 
report environment or a custom report for myself, Alp. And when I save this right here, this will allow me to create a custom report that's still linked to the same data model. And what I mean by that is as new data comes in from your various different data sources like Databricks and Snowflake, all of your data will be in one place. All of your custom reports users are building will also be linked to that data set as well, which is a huge advantage to creating a single source of truth model. Now in here, when I click on the edit button, if I have the access to be able to do this, I will have the ability to not only edit the report, edit the layout to a tabular model data set, but I also have the ability to be able to create my own visuals, such as being able to create a chart right here by month and year. That allows us to look at things such as occupancy and occupancy last year. So if I go ahead now and then I click in here, I can search for my occupancy. And then I can go ahead and drag and drop my various different values on here. So a nice and clear advantage from being able to quickly be able to pivot the data. So even so, if I wanted to, I can also make a copy of this particular visual right here, take out the values that I don't need, drag in the values that I'd like to keep. And then what I can do is I can create a nice trend chart to show how my data looks over time. I can even show it by month and year. So here is my revenue. I can click off of tool tips to be able to edit these. Again, these are all things that are very common that many Power BI users can do, uh, which gives you ultimate flexibility to be able to design a report in the way the user might need that might be different from what the organizational need is specifically. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on Power BI slash Actaris and how you can use your data to be able to slice and dice and look at various different periods over time. Again, utilizing that personalized visual option as a real clear advantage right here to be able to bring in any sort of value. So again, going back here, if I click on my, my personalized visual, instead I go and grab, instead of this field right here, I add a new field, which in this case is my occupancy. I now have the ability to be able to look at my occupancy over time and see what the occupancy looks like as we go throughout the entire year right here. So thank you guys for listening. Looking forward to your feedback on this. And this is Alf Actinis with Actaris signing out. <laughs>